So, uh, I don't often make videos. It's really weird lighting. Um, this is my Blu-ray collection. Yeah. Uh, it's a, my room's a bit of a mess at the moment. There's more near. There's all these action figures and stuff, as you can see. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I see a lot of these uh, videos that are basically people saying, well, giving you tips on uh, how to start a DVD or physical media collection. I kind of... You know, just say DVD or Blu-ray collection. Stop saying physical media. It just sounds stupid. You just it, Yeah, sorry. Um, I'll give you, like, tips on how to start. Right, the best tip you can do is just buy what you want. Don't go overboard. Um, because a lot of people will get dragged into doing that, buying anything and everything. Right, that's the problem I've got. Right, so... These are... All Blu-rays. I've got... DVDs and Blu-rays up there. I've got... DVDs there... DVDs there, DVDs there, there. I've got them under my bed. I've got, I've got them all in a uh, a cupboard on my landing area, and I am overrun with DVDs. Annoyingly, I say that, and I say don't buy anything and everything. But here's the problem, and I will show you. I bought these today. I bought five Blu-rays and one DVD. Yes, I bought Return of the Jedi on DVD. I already own it on VHS, DVD and Blu-ray. But these, or this one, Return of the Jedi, is the uh, two-disc uh, edition. Uh, I think it's the 1997 releases. And uh, this has got the original theatrical release on it, which is why I bought it. Um, so the reason I'm saying this is there's a video which is half an hour long I've just watched where someone gave tips on how to start a, a DVD collection or a physical media collection um, and he's got some good points but if you want to buy Blu-rays or DVDs or 4Ks just do it. If you can afford to do it, do it. Keep physical media, Blu-rays and DVDs, alive by buying them. You don't have to like go mad and buy everything under the sun. That's the issue I made. Well, that's the problem I had and the mistake I made. But now I'm a slightly, slightly, a little bit more picky with uh, what I choose. But... If you see a film you like, and it's affordable, and you can afford to do it, buy it. Like, tip number one, buy what you want. Tip number two, see tip number one. However, there is one little problem. If you do get suckered into spending a lot of money on uh, DVDs and Blu-rays, you will end up with stuff that you will never watch. Like this collection of mine, there is a lot of films on here that I'm probably, that I've bought that I'm probably never going to watch. For one, I own the Arrow release of Jack Hill's Pit Stop. I have had this. When did it come out? I have had this since 2014. I have never watched it. It's 2023 20, now. I've had it for nine years. Never watched it. Another film I've never watched. Where is it? Is it that one? No, I'll tell you another film I've never watched. And it's one I will probably rectify at some point, but this is still sealed. One of one films, Into the Night, with Jeff Goldblum and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. I've owned this for... Four years? Four or five years? Never watched it. Oops. Like I said, it's still sealed. Still got the shrink wrap on it. So that's the thing. You'll buy things in sales. 
and you'll be like, I'll get around to watching that at some point. Look. Look. Look at all the DVDs. Do you know what? I can see at least three films I've never watched. Cyborg Cop. Why the fuck do I own Cyborg Cop? I'm never going to watch it. It sounds crap. What else we got up there? I'm trying to think now. What else is the other one I saw? That I'm probably never going to watch. I think I've actually watched 90% of these. I think I've watched them all, actually. Oh, no. All right on the end. Mission of Justice with Michael Parry. Not the Michael Parry. Um... Is it Jeff Speakman? I don't know. It was one of the karate people. Never watched it. It was 10 pence in a charity shop. Why did I buy it? Because I had an addiction and I needed to own a physical copy of a film. I'm never going to watch it. I'm trying to see what else is this there. Um... Okay, so. Dog Soldiers. There's Dogs of War and Dog Soldiers. So this film... Stars Nick Nolte, Tuesday Wild, and uh, Michael Moriarty. Um, I bought this when I was working. Where was I? It's got. It's actually got the receipt inside. Ah, so I bought this when I was still working in Blockbuster. Blockbuster closed in 2013. I should know. I was part of a job in 2013. I've been working for Tesco since. This film, I have owned for 10 years. I've never watched it. Why have I never watched it? No idea. I think it's called Who Comes With The Rain as well. Or Who Will Stop The Rain, but for some reason they gave it the, the name. Oh, like Dog Soldiers or something. It's not Dog Soldiers. However, Dog Soldiers, the Neil Marshall, Neil Marshall film. It's great. I need to get the Blu-ray of that, actually. Because I've only got the old Pathé uh, region... To uh, release, but what I'm trying to get at is, you will, if you get suckered in by uh, the lure of cheap DVDs and Blu-rays, uh, you will find yourself overrun with films that are either going to be shit or films that you're going to love. See, now the problem I've got now is that I stopped buying movies for a long time. I'd only buy like two or three a year. But the problem that I have now is that there's a CEX that has opened up um, literally two doors down the street, around the corner from me. So I go in there maybe twice a week, three times a week. Like, I bought the six today. I bought a few more the other day. So, yeah, I'm getting back into the habit of overbuying money. But the one thing I will say this time is that I can actually afford it now. Before, I couldn't. No, that was the mistake I made. I was suckered into uh, the lure of buying um, movies that were cheap. At the time, it was it was quantity over quality. That was the problem. I was buying so many, and when I worked for Blockbuster, they gave you ten percent or twenty twenty uh, ten percent on new films and twenty percent off pre-owned stuff. Um, as a staff bonus, and uh, I took a I took good advantage of that, and uh, yeah, I ended up getting a credit card maxed out, which took me a good fifteen years to clear. Because at the time I was working part time for Tesco's, now I'm working full time. Uh, I can I can afford. I paid that off, and I can afford to spend money on. Uh, stuff that I want without worrying about racking up debt, which is which is good. But because I can afford it, I'm buying more again, and I think I'm probably gonna get stuck back in the whole. Oh shit! I've run out of space. I'm buying too many. I I I've got stuff on the way from Amazon UK, eBay, Amazon Spain. And Amazon Germany, which I ordered yesterday, which I might do a video of when they show up. But yeah, so if you're going to buy, if you're going to start a collection, just be wary of 
the hold that buying a Blu-ray or a DVD or buying multiple Blu-rays and multiple DVDs um, will have over you because you will find yourself sucked into the world of quantity over quality. So set yourself a budget, call it your fun money or something like that, and curate uh, a library. Now, so my Blu-rays now is essentially, uh, well, everything that's on these shelves. This is a library. It's all alphabet alphabetized. I have, and on the uh, premium collection, I have a specific type of um, collection. As you can probably see, the majority of it is science fiction and fantasy with the Yakuza um, thrown in and uh, Blow as a crime, or Blow and um, Bad Day of Black Rock. Uh, it's sort of like chucked in a couple of crime movies. Uh, and my, what else is it? Also the same, I could say the same with my, uh, my powerhouse. It's mostly science fiction, horror and crime. Um, so yeah, just don't get suckered in. Peace.